song sheet. If your eyes are beginning to focus, you can take your song sheet. We'll do all three verses this morning that's in the garden. Mr. Jake will play guitar for us. sunrise service here at the lake you know traditionally on Easter Sunday the greeting is he is risen and then you reply he is risen. Indeed. so he is risen he is risen indeed you know I've always touched I, I read about a, a British minister named Sankst, Sankster and uh, he had an incurable disease, one of the muscle diseases where his muscles just began to atrophy and shut down. And he knew that eventually, of course, it would take his life. And on the last Easter, it had already gotten to the point where he was no longer able to walk, no longer able to speak. And he wrote, it's terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice to shout, he is risen. But it would be still more terrible to have a voice and not want to shout. Amen. Amen. And I thought that just really touched me. Today I thought we would just briefly look at the, the greatest discovery of all time, the empty tomb, as found in the Gospel of John. And uh, the very first verse says, The first day of the week come, and Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher and see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Mary came. And actually we know from the other gospels it wasn't just simply Mary, it was the, several of the women, several of the early followers of Jesus. They had seen him crucified on Friday. They had seen him hastily put into a grave. And they came on Sunday morning early perhaps like it is just now, as it was becoming light, 
And they came into this place, and what did they find? Well, they found a lot of things. But it's important, they came when? On Sunday morning, the first day of the week. And you know, the early church was so impressed with that that they made Sunday, that Easter Sunday, every Sunday is really Easter. We celebrate the risen Lord, but especially at Easter time. And what did she see? She saw something very important. She saw the stone rolled away, but that's not what was important. What was important? The stone was rolled away, and she saw into the tomb, and it was empty. That's what was important. It was empty. Verse 2 says, Then she runneth and come to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved. And, and she said unto them, They have taken the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have taken him. So she, she went to them. She was so excited, but she didn't understand that he had risen. She thought someone had taken him. And so she went to the disciples and she said, where did they take him? Where did they take him? And now Peter and John make the discovery. Because it says in verse 3 that Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, and of course that's John, and they came to the sepulcher. And verse 4 says, so they ran both together, but the other disciple outran Peter. I know that John wrote this gospel, but isn't it interesting? <laughs> John was the younger man, Peter being older, and he just had to put in there that he outran him to the tomb. <laughs> he got there first. And then in verse 5, he said, stooping down, he looked in, and he saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Isn't that interesting? They ran to the tomb. And like I said, John outran Peter, and he got there first, and he glanced in, and he saw that this doesn't look right. There's no body, but the clothes are lying there. And the right way that it's written is there's not just a pile of clothes. It's like they're still in that wrap. They had wrapped Jesus, as was the method of burial at that time, and they were still there. But there was no body inside of it. And this is really weird. He didn't want to go in, so he backed up. Then comes Simon Peter following him. And Peter, always being brash and bold, Peter went into the sepulcher, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. And he saw the napkin that was about the head. And it was not there with the other clothes, but it was wrapped together. It was all still wrapped together, indicating that a body had been in there, but something had happened. Then they went in also, the other disciple. John went in, and he saw the sepulcher. And what does it say? He believed. At that point, he said, Jesus is risen. See, everyone else was trying to say that they've taken him away, but John put two, and he put it together. He put it together, and he saw that the Lord had been risen. What a thoughtful discovery. Something that each one of us has to make. Just listen on a beautiful morning. And, of course, we have this opportunity to be here at the lake see the dogwoods in bloom and it's just a beautiful day and the birds are chirping it's a it's a wonderful sound they were in a garden they weren't on a lake they were in a garden and i'm sure they had the same sounds with the trees and the nature and, and all of that but but they saw something even far more, far more fantastic the lord was risen what a wonderful time to celebrate that. And if you want to discover that empty tomb, you've got to actually go and look. That's what John, that's what Peter, and that's what the women did. They went and they looked. And so I urge each and every one of you to do just that. To go and examine the early writings, what the people testified to, to actually examine Christianity. And of course, I would think that most of you here are Christians, if that's why you're here. But there may be some that don't know 
And I urge you to examine, because why do we gather together? Why do we say, he is risen? He is risen Because we serve a risen Savior. Let's pray, and then we're going to close with a chorus. So Keith will come and lead us, but let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you right now on this most wonderful of occasions, early Easter Sunday. We gather together outside to see the wonders of nature, hearing how nature itself in chorus is singing out, He is risen, He is risen, He is risen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. Long for the narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to him You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Thank you for coming. Uh, you are all invited to our fellowship hall at the church. We're going to have breakfast. We have enough room that we can spread out and I think eat there safely together. Uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you for coming. And uh, that concludes our early morning sunrise service. Thank you.